Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I appreciate you checking out another video. Today I'm gonna to be installing a new radio in the WRX. Check this out guys. This is a aftermarket Android head unit. There you can see it. It's a 10 inch screen with I think like a nine inch display because you do have some of that black going around. I see people buying the iDoing head unit for between three and $500. This one cost me $158. It was pretty cheap, so I couldn't pass it up. I figured it'd be worth trying and relaying to you guys whether it's really good or really bad. This was advertised to fit a WRX or Forester. The Forester, there's just one giant hazard switch here. There is no center screen control button. However, this one does come with the double button. So you can actually use this for both vehicles. Uh, you'll flip this thing around and on the back side there'll be some screws and you'll replace the single button trim with the two button trim which is really cool. Look at the back of this thing, there's nothing to it. Um, so I'm really curious as to if this is going to be really good or really crap. I'm going to apologize in advance if you guys get some wind noise. Uh, if you have a plastic pry tool, that's going to work better obviously, but uh, I don't have one. I really should get one. You're gonna see this is going to separate from the radio. Once you have this separated, we can go ahead and unplug the plugs on the back. You may have to use that flathead or a pry tool to kind of push down on those clips. Now on top of the radio, there's gonna be two 10 millimeter bolts. Go ahead and remove those. So now it can get a little bit tricky because we have to pull these bottom panels out to make this a little bit easier to get to the bolt uh, behind the radio. So you're gonna have a Phillips head screw here uh, and I believe just a bunch of pop clips everywhere else. So I went ahead and removed the side trim, literally just take a flat head and pry that out. And then you're gonna have a Phillips head screw right here. We're gonna go ahead and remove that. Unfortunately, I think we're gonna have to remove all this dash to do this, but it's really not that bad. Uh, we should be able to just kind of pull the, yeah, pull this out now. Um, I'm not gonna disconnect any of this. I'm just gonna kind of let it hang. Uh, now this piece over here, I took that screw out uh, and it should pop out, but it's trying to break on me at the bottom. There we go. Just be careful because if you pull on the bottom tab, you see right there it was starting to crack and I think it was gonna end up tearing right there. There's gonna be two 10 millimeter bolts on each side of this. This is the airbag, so don't unplug this or anything. Um, we're just gonna drop it to let it hang down a little bit. Now that we have that, we can kind of pull it backwards and slowly let it down. So I'm just gonna kind of sit it like that on its side. So the bolt for the radio is actually right there. That 10 millimeter bolt that you're seeing right there, that is the bolt for the radio. So go ahead and remove that. All right, so this side should be a little bit easier. All we're gonna have to do is drop the glove box and there's gonna be a little hydraulic here on the side. You're gonna pull out on that and it's gonna disconnect. Then you're gonna push in on both sides. And once you do that, this will drop down. Now you can literally just pull straight out on your glove box and move it. Now this one guys is right there. Right there. You're definitely gonna want an extension. So now I should be able to just pop this radio out. Should, it doesn't always work like that, but pull the shifter back, grab my microfiber, and I'm going to try to pry out these HVAC controls. Carefully. All right, uh, but just go ahead and disconnect all your cables from the back of the radio. I think we have most of the connectors. So what I'm gonna do is start plugging them in and then whatever we're missing, I'll try and figure out after the fact. Okay, so I took the four screws out and moved them over and moved the HVAC over to the new unit here. And so all we have to do yet is take the vents out and replace them. Actually, I'm sorry, we have to take this out and replace it with the two panel one uh, that came included in the box with this thing. So then we're just gonna remove the vents and it's these little clips here. You just kind of use your uh, flathead and push in on them as you're pulling out. Okay, so I just ran into my first issue and it's getting the factory vents on. So as you can see, they're all broken now. The clips on the OEM ones are not tapered. They're the exact same width the entire way through and down to the plastic. Uh, the the ones on here, however, are tapered slightly. 
and the vents don't there there you can see it really well it like it gets wider down down at the bottom you can see it doesn't want to go down over so I had to break these tabs off so what that did was like you can see there's a decent sized gap there and I can close the gap up a little bit if I push the vent closer to the assembly that's as close as I can get it right there so I think once it's installed and it's up against the factory uh, vent ducts it'll be okay you're not gonna see really a big gap there but it does bother me a little bit okay so there's a couple things to note here we'll see once how this plays out um, but this main cord plugs in has all the other connectors these two right here in the middle are for USB ports uh, hopefully what I'm gonna end up having to do down the road is buy a USB adapter. This did not come with one, but I could buy a USB adapter that will uh, utilize the factory USB port in the glove box. We have this one here, and all this is for is like an external amp and video in and out. So like you could literally like hook an Xbox or a PlayStation up to this, uh, but yeah, so that's kind of pointless. And then the only other one we got, this one says camera, and this will plug in somewhere in here. Anyways, there's the antenna that's just going to plug in like that. And then this is all going to get plugged into our factory plugs. Also, this thing comes with a GPS. It basically threads in right here and then it's got a little box and you can route this up and put it on your windshield or, you know, on top of your dash or really wherever. Uh, but I'm probably not going to install this because I'm never really going to need it. And as long as my phone is connected to the radio, I can have my maps up at all times without using this because it'll just use the GPS from my phone. I'm gonna plug all this in, plug the HVAC controls back in, and we'll see where we're at. So before I actually go ahead and get the entire install done, I just wanna see. Okay, HVAC controls are still good and everything. Um, so I wanna see here what all works. Okay, so I'm not getting a display for the reverse camera. There's literally, oh man, I'm so stupid. Boom, there it is. Okay, let's try this again. I'm gonna set this back up and try the reverse camera. That was my dumb fault. That probably fixed it, we'll see. Hey, there it is. The resolution itself looks, looks decent. Um, steering wheel controls. I think there's a way to map those. Settings. Steering learn. Volume up. Press and hold that. Set up success. There we go. Volume up. It's working. Okay, guys. Awesome. Just what I thought when I pushed this together, it closed up the gap for the vent because it like pushed in from the vent ducts. So the vents are good now. Everything's fine on that end, which is really nice. So we're good to go. We can pull the screen protector off and we are done. Again, there's no more screws down here, so I don't have to worry about that, but I am gonna have to put my glove box back in and put all that paneling back up. So there's something else weird going on here. You see this gap at the top of the screen? When I go like this and I kind of hold it up, like it's supposed to kind of be like that, I think. But when I push this thing down into the grooves, so that's how it's supposed to look. But when I put this thing into place, I get that weird gap. And I don't think I'm gonna be able to get rid of that. I think it's just something with how it's built. So there you can see that's kind of how it's supposed to be with this like out. And as soon as I start kind of pushing this into where it's supposed to be, it flexes this plastic and you get that gap in there. Yeah, you know what, it's not that bad. It's not like I'm seeing daylight through it or anything, it just, it really doesn't look that bad. Well guys, I have been running this head unit for about two weeks now. I wanted to, before I posted the video, I wanted to be able to run it for a little bit and give you guys some honest feedback on it, you know, and so I figured I'd run it for like a two week test, let you guys know what I thought of it after two weeks and let you know whether it's worth buying or not. So is it worth buying? Yes and no. It depends what you're looking for. Uh, I messaged the seller of this head unit because in the listing, it said that this head unit was compatible with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. It did not say that it was included. It just said that it was compatible. So I assumed that it was integrated. Well, that was wrong of me to assume. 
and I had to purchase a separate dongle, refused to buy it from them, so I bought it from someone else. Uh, from uh, The brand is Carlinkit, and I think that's probably like the name brand of, of those dongles. And you can buy one for about $20 that is wired, and when you plug it in, it'll work with Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Or you can buy a wireless one for about 50 to 60 bucks, and it's supposed to work wirelessly. The main reason that I got rid of the stock radio is number one was the sound quality. I didn't like how, basically, if you have the stock radio and the stock sound system, you already know that when you go to like level 25, if your windows are down at all, you can't hear the music. And everything from like 25 to max volume at like 30 sounds exactly the same. It doesn't get any louder when you keep increasing the volume. So, and it still doesn't sound like the speakers are even trying because the stock, there is no amplifier in the radio. The stock radio is garbage. This actually fixed that. And I'm glad about it. This made it a lot louder. And the sound quality is so much better. It almost sounded like I upgraded the speakers when I installed this. If you are not listening to loud music, so if you're cruising around and you got the windows up so you don't need to like crank the volume up real loud, you can dial in the settings really nice and it almost sounds like you got a factory subwoofer. It, it's got really nice low end bass. It has really good uh, mid bass and treble and it never hits like a high crackly treble tone like the stock unit sometimes does. However, when you go to increase the volume, it eventually starts to get crackly. So if you're going to have really loud volume, like if you're going to max the thing out, you know, if you got the windows down and you got a loud exhaust and you really want to be able to hear the music when you're out on the highway driving going 70 miles an hour with the windows down, uh, you're going to have to alter the settings a little bit and basically set it to treble being most of the, you know, you're going to have to set the treble up and the bass low. And then you can really crank this thing up and make it really loud and you'll be able to hear it really well, but the sound quality is not going to be as good. It's still good. It's just not as good. It's, it's, it's going to lose all that depth that it typically would have. So it improved the sound quality for me. I'm sold on that. That was really good. The other problem that I had with the stock radio was my Android Auto never seemed to work properly. I'd plug it in and work for a couple minutes and it would disconnect. It just had constant issues and I couldn't figure them out. Uh, I tried troubleshooting on my phone and I think ultimately it was something with the head unit. It just did not like my phone uh, because back before we sold our Crosstrek, I would plug my phone into the Crosstrek and it worked in there. It just never worked in my WRX, which is so weird. So this did fix that issue. However, what I wanted to let you guys know and my ultimate review. So let me show you guys this dongle. So this USB port right here is connected to the back of the radio. And then this right here is the car link it. And after you have that plugged in, you plug your phone cable into the box. And now I have this tucked up underneath the dash. It was very easy to do. I just pulled the dash out a little bit and that tucks up under there perfectly and you can't see it. Then I have this cable coming back to my phone. So you'll have to install this app and I went ahead and installed it on my phone and on the radio. It's called Auto Kit. And it seems kind of sketchy because uh, it's not on like the Play Store or anything. You have to go out of your way and download it as an APK file from Google somewhere. And then when you go to download it, your phone and your radio are going to warn you that the file may be harmful to your device. However, I did run it through Norton Security System and it, it came back as good. Like no issues were found with it. So there's no like there's no malware. There's no issues with it, at least from where I downloaded it from. However, that's a little bit sketchy and you may not be okay with doing that. You can even have your phone locked. The app doesn't need to be open and you plug your phone in. And as soon as you plug your phone in, it should start charging and it should connect. If it doesn't automatically connect, uh, you know, you can try and open up the app. I've had one or two instances where it did not want to connect and I had to like shut the radio off and back on. But for the most part, when it comes on, it stays on and it works well. Something to note here is I think it's that car link it box. Uh, it really distorts the graphics. And it may be hard to tell on the camera, but in person, they look really weird. And they're really, really pixely. However, like, you know, if you guys have Android Auto and you don't already know, you can play games on it. Like, you can open up and play games. And the graphics on the games are really good. However, like, look at this YouTube Music logo. It, It's, like, so pixely and, like, it's not complete. Like, it looks really weird. But then, like, this game will load up. And you'll be like, okay, let's play this. And, like, the graphics on this freaking game look perfectly fine. 
and it's pretty it's it's pretty quick it might have a little lag to it but for the most part it's pretty quick it does its job for the most part and it is compatible with the steering wheel controls i have that all set up and the nice thing is you can basically set your steering wheel controls up to do whatever you want so if you don't want to use them for their designated button I would give this whole radio like a six and a half, maybe a seven out of 10. So I know the final question is, would I recommend this radio? And the answer is going to be yes and no, and it really depends on what you're looking for in a radio. You guys know I always try and be as honest as I can with you, and I don't want to steer you in the wrong direction. So I'm going to tell you right now, if you are looking for a moderate upgrade over stock, this is a really good budget radio. It does the job. It looks nice and it's half the price of, say, an iDoing unit. If you want a really good performing radio, I wouldn't buy this one. I would just save a little bit more money and buy the iDoing unit. Uh, it's literally double the price. I think even after I bought that car linket, I ended up paying... That car linket was 30 bucks. the radio was 150 so I spent probably about 180 to $190. The iDoing kit, I think, is still roughly around $450. But if you want that extra quality and you want it to be like hyper smooth and you want it to like work really well and have a really great resolution, your best bet is going to be the iDoing unit or something in that same market. I didn't need all that, so I'm kind of content with this one. So if I could go back and redo it as of now, the only issue that I have with this radio so far was that, you know, that little bit of pixelation that you get. However, it still works fine. Like when I plug in the maps and I use GPS, it works fine. It takes me where I need to go and it doesn't like, it doesn't like hesitate. Like it doesn't like freeze or like get like weird. Um, the only other issue is sometimes when I put it in reverse, the backup camera takes a little bit longer to come on, which is the only thing I don't really like. Um, but besides that, for the most part, the thing works decent. At the end of the day, guys, it's up to you. It's it, it's your decision whether or not you think it's worth the extra money. This thing does pretty much everything that the iDoing unit does. It's just not quite as refined, and I'm okay with that. So if you're okay with that, save yourself the money. Uh, if you're not okay with that and you want something super pristine and everything's nice and refined, maybe the iDoing unit or the SciCan unit or there's like another one out there too that works decently. So... Um, but that's going to be it for today's video, guys. I appreciate you checking it out. Sorry if this got a little bit long. I just wanted to give you guys the best feedback that I could. Um, but anyways, I will see you guys in the next video.